You're watching KRQD News 13. Remembering the attack on Pearl Harbor, today marks 81 years since that fateful day back in 1941. We are going to be sitting down with historian Rafi Andonian talking about the attacks and how New Mexico played a pivotal role it's when it came to the U.S. winning World War II. Today marks 81 years since the attack on Pearl Harbor. And on this day, we want to look back on how New Mexico led the country in the U.S. effort to win World War II. We are joined by our good friend and historian, Rafi Andonian, to find out more about our role in that time period. Rafi, it's always great to have you with us. Especially on the 81st anniversary Absolutely. of Pearl Harbor. Thank Absolutely, you. yeah. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's not only uh, important that we continue as Americans to remember that event and, and honor those who uh, perished on that day, but uh, t looking at where the resulting, uh, for what resulted from that was World War II, New Mexico's role, how did that come about? Well, of course, it starts with the attack on Pearl Harbor, right? And what's important about Pearl Harbor, to remember, before we jump into how New Mexico contributed mm -hmm. to, to set, set up the New Mexico contribution, is that when the attack happened, it was a lot of things going on. For example, the United States was in diplomatic relations with Japan and was having some trouble because of economic sanctions we were putting on Japan because of what they did in China. So we were not happy with what Japan did in China. That set the stage for the attacks of 2,400 or so people that got killed at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, and it became one of the bloodiest days in American history. So we didn't just enter World War II, you know, in a nonchalant way. It was a huge deal, and Pearl Harbor was damaged. Every battleship there was damaged. And, uh, you know, other bloodiest days, of course, 9-11 we think of. Mm -hmm. I compare it to 9-11 for us to remember on the Remembrance Day yeah. because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's a surprise attack. As, as we felt on 9-11, of course, Pearl Harbor is on a military target, 9-11 is on a civilian target. Yeah. Then New Mexico comes in to contribute to that major war effort the United States enters as a result of Pearl Harbor, one of the bloodiest days in American history. Yeah. And as the president at the time mentioned, a day that will live in infamy, and it has. Continues to do so, as we remember 9-11, yeah. just the same way. Yeah, and, and you saw, uh, of course, the development of the uh, nuclear bomb right there. That, uh, that, uh, so, you know, kind so of that's, end of the war. Yeah, and that's exactly New Mexico's role, right? There's a multitude of roles, but the big one that we all think of is the Manhattan Project. Mm -hmm. Here in New Mexico, the laboratory in Los Alamos was called Project Y. That site is part of a larger Manhattan district. Manhattan district had multiple sites throughout the country. That's what the reference was. And today, there's Manhattan Project National Historical Park, which actually protects some of those sites across the country. Not all of them, but some of them, one of which is Los Alamos. Mm -hmm. And at Project Y, the reason that Los Alamos in particular is so important across the country within the Manhattan District is because, of course, that's where the atomic bomb, the mm -hmm. world's first atomic bomb, is designed and created with Robert Oppenheimer, who's the head scientist there at the laboratory. Now, interestingly for New Mexicans, there is a movie in the summer of 2023 that's coming out on Oppenheimer. It's uh, directed by Christopher Nolan, who, of course, has won many Academy Awards, has been nominated for dozens of more. And on the poster for the movie, it says that the world changes forever. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. So talk about a turning point in American history right there with the Manhattan Project, not just because of the end of World War II, but there is technology we still use today in energy and in medicine from that of course, a major scientific achievement. And it's still fascinating just to be in Los Alamos, the secret city there, and, and uh, just realize everything that came out of there. And of course, the testing of the atomic bomb at uh, the Trinity site down south. Uh, it's just, it is. Like it, they call it the day the sun rose twice. Now, one thing to mention, that's right, that one of the things to mention that's a scientific achievement here in New Mexico, in Los Alamos, I brought these, these commemorative coins to oh, show wow. you just how much took place here. Now, we, just, we talked about the impact, great. Let's go down to the human level. At the Manhattan Project site in Los Alamos, you have at least two dozen Nobel Prize winning scientists. One house, the Hans Bethe House as it's now known, which you see there with the commemorative coin that the Los Alamos Historical Society released, wow. had in it two different Nobel Prize winning scientists that lived in it during the Manhattan Project at different points. Hans Bethe lived in it longer, so that's the name that has stuck to it. But you have two different Nobel Prize winning scientists in one house. That's how much concentrated yeah. scientific genius is in Los Alamos at the time, in the secret city, as you pointed, living there secretly, and thousands of people supporting. So people, sometimes we have in our head that, you know, 15, 20 guys are up there. No, you have thousands of people, including native New Mexicans who are up there, 
who are supporting doing logistical work, delivery work, the construction work, you gotta house all these people somewhere. All this stuff is taking place and New Mexico is contributing both local and who it attracts from around the world, as I mentioned, all the top scientists, with New Mexico leading the way in the World War II effort, because you do not have the end of World War II and the outcome you have without everything that took place in New Mexico, especially for a state that has such a small population compared to the rest of the country, it's certainly an outsized influence on the outcome of the Second World War. And again, it's worth a trip, like I said, to head up to Los Alamos and check out the museum and everything associ Two associated with it. The Science and Museum the and the History Museum. museum. Yeah. Yeah. And the Nuclear Museum here. Uh, Rafi, this is uh, beyond fascinating, as always, and you bring us some great uh, information. Where else can we go to check out stuff online? There's two places I would go to start. One, I would go to a National Park Service website, which mm -hmm. is nps.gov. And in there, if you look for Pearl Harbor, you'll find a Pearl Harbor site in Hawaii. And if you type in Manhattan Project, you'll find a Manhattan Project National Historical Park that I mentioned that has many sites across the country. And then locally, I would, go to, I would start at losalmoshistory.org, which is where you get a lot of the local stories starting out. Los Alamos History Museum, which is separate from the Bradbury Science Museum, which is part of the laboratory. Mm -hmm. The Los Alamos History Museum covers the local stories and the local perspective of going through the Manhattan Project, but also covers the years before the project and after the project. So you get the local perspective on World War II experience and beyond. Fascinating, as always, Rafi. Thank you so much for what you brought us and for what you uh, do histori historian-wise and, uh, and turning us on to something that we may have never known before. Thank you all. Absolutely.